The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Looking back on yesterday Because you hadn't seen sun You tend to disbelieve Though you've never known death When someone dies you grieve Though you've never seen the good Lord There's ones that worship him each day Find them in the chapels and on their knees to pray. What's it take to be a believer? Tell me who's to say. Do you think that we've come this far looking back on yesterday? It's been all over the news, in every newspaper, magazine, internet blog. Every radio station, AM, FM, every television station has been talking about the Bigfoot find in Georgia. Well, everyone waited for the proof beyond any speculation today that at a press conference, Tom Biscardi was going to tell the world all about the scientific proof and evidence that he has that Bigfoot is real. In my heart of hearts, I, I hoped for the great people that we've had on this show who, who have spent their life looking for Bigfoot, that their dream would come true. So I watched with anticipation as Tom Biscardi got in front of the cameras at the Palo Alto Hotel and gave himself a commercial... brought the two people on stage, Witten and Dwyer, who allegedly found this Bigfoot. And after it was all over, we knew nothing more at the end of the press conference than we did at the beginning of the press conference. There was no scientific evidence that was presented. There was no DNA. There was no, no evidence whatsoever. Biscardi, in his promoter way, because that's basically what his his forte is in life, promoting Las Vegas acts. He, um, he said, well, what we want to do is we want to have an autopsy done with a scientific team that I have uh, accumulated. And no, Dr. Jeff Meldrum is not one of the people on the team. That would have been too smart. But what I'm seeing here is a pattern, the same pattern that can be found in the alien autopsy film, the same pattern that can be found in the crystal skull myth, the same kind of people are involved here, promoters. There is a common thread when there's fast money to be made, the promotion aspect of it. Mitchell Hedges loved to talk about these grand things that that he was going to do and what he had done, and and yet he was a man of very little substance. Tom Biscardi is no different. 
he is a promoter who decided that Bigfoot would be one day a cash cow for him. And he's tried many times and he's failed. Why these two guys want to get in bed with Tom Biscardi, I did not realize until I saw them and I heard them talk. They're three peas from a pod. Tom Biscardi has nothing but the highest of regard for this guy who was shot, the cop who was shot, who was, I believe it's Witten, Matthew Witten, who was the cop, who got shot in the line of duty. That doesn't give him any credibility when it comes to pulling a stunt. And then the chief of police for the uh, for the police force where Witten works as a police officer, he's on medical leave now. He knew that Witten was going out into the Bigfoot, uh, into the hills looking for Bigfoot. What kind of deputy dog outfit is that? Robert W. Morgan, a real Bigfoot researcher, joins me when I come back from this two-minute commercial break. Right here, live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Welcome back, everyone. That was uh, Fox News reporting on the press conference. No one is impressed. Not one person that I've spoken to all day, and I've had many of the researchers uh, sending me uh, MSN messages and emails today. In fact, last night, one of the researchers said that they were 40-60, as 40% not believing, 60% believing. Today, 70% hoax, 30% belief. I think that these people have done more harm to the Bigfoot community and the rest of the paranormal community than is known at this time. Joining me now is a real Bigfoot researcher, the one and only Robert W. Morgan. How are you, Robert? Uh, sad Why, and buddy? angry. Sad and angry. 
Uh, well, I'm glad I'm up here in Montana because if I was anywhere near Mr. Biscardi, he would have some serious problems. Well, he already yeah. has serious problems, but... Oh, I, I'm talking about a whole different type. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm an in-the-face in type of fellow. But uh, what he's done is in, unconscionable. So, uh, and, and, but you know what, Rob? This has gone on for a very long time. Uh, so many things that uh, were set down in front of me that were absolute total fakes. Uh, people like to fake things for whatever psychological reason that they need some kind of attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, um, in, after the um, 70, 1970s expeditions come into the 1980s, I literally disappeared from most folks because I preferred doing my work alone or with a very small group of people because of the, um, the, the extent that some people would go to to fake things. But what this man did and has done in the past is unconscionable. I wish there were a law uh, that could be invoked because the amount of damage he's done to serious people. Uh, first of all, the forest giants are real. They are there. They're not monsters. They're not all these woolly booger stuff, anything mm -hmm. like that. They're, they're perfectly passive. No one has ever been hurt by uh, a forest giant. In fact, on the alternative, I've had too many uh, reports of them actually helping people at certain times. And what uh, Mr. Biscardi, my flags went up immediately um, when I heard, first of all, his name. Second of all, when he did not invite Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum uh, down. That was a big flag. When, yeah, and when they talk about uh, they're, they're going to take DNA samples, let me tell you what they would do. They would already have prepackaged the DNA sample that they had, had, had gotten from some zoo somewhere on a gorilla or a chimpanzee or something like that, and they would have deftly exchanged it only in the hands of someone like Milton. Of course, there's other scientists that could do the same thing, where they would keep the sample, they would take the sample, keep it in their hands, mm -hmm and transport it themselves. Now you know you're going to get the real thing. But this is unconscionable, and it's going to knock, uh, it's going to make everyone look like a bunch of clowns. And people that, that uh, tried to accept it up front, uh, Rob, they were, that's wishful thinking. They're so anxious for something. You have to be extremely cautious with this, because if we are correct, um, and I, I've long said, uh, I've gone against the stream, uh, everyone say What's a, it's an ape and all this. And I say, I don't think so. And although the scientists like to say this too, and this is to protect themselves. I don't need protected. But a, an ape does not walk, habitually walk erect. They do not have the helix, the big toe for no. mouth. They don't have the opposing thumb. They, they, uh, they don't have any of these things. They don't have the articulated speech program uh, that, that we discovered on those Bigfoot tapes with uh, Ron Moorhead, where they can actually pronounce high, uh, with, because of the uh, properly shaped hundred point, where they say, you're not welcome. I mean, this is as clear as a bell if you're listening for it. And uh, the people that made the recordings didn't understand it, didn't even hear it for 22 years. Therefore, they did not put it on there. But all of these things, uh, of course, you know, they want to assign it something other than uh, a hominid. They need to make it a pungidae, an ape, in order to uh, not be attacked by some of the religious uh, far right. I'm of the, the belief that whatever is is it doesn't matter what you want i want anyone else wants let's deal with facts and what biscardi has done is uh, and now this is the second time he's done it i just wish to god there was a law of some sort either that or a good old-fashioned horsewhip because he definitely deserves it here's uh this is uh, just one of the uh the many uh news articles that we have posted at exxonradio.com exxonradiotv.com uh, Bigfoot trackers claim they found their prey Georgia, uh, Georgia gorilla Bigfoot body found uh, let me see and uh, once again this goes this is an in-depth article that goes into the history of this find and it also goes into the history of the the hunters as well as Tom Biscardi 
Um, this is from, let me see, Carolyn. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is from Carolyn McCarthy. And uh, the headline is Internet Captivated by Bigfoot Hunters Press Conference. It's the ultimate summer Friday news story, CNN webcasting a press conference hosted by the man who claim. The men who claim they nabbed a dead body of the legendary creature known as Bigfoot. Bigfoot hunter Tom Biscardi held the press conference in Palo Alto, California, in conjunction with Matthew Witten and Rick Dyer, the two men from Georgia who claim that they um, found the corpse while hiking. Biscardi would, wouldn't actually show the body, saying that he had invited uh, News Fox reporter Megan Kelly to show it on air and that a number of scientists would be performing an autopsy on Monday. Starting Monday, I should have assembled some fine scientists that will do an autopsy to find the origin, uh, the origin and death of this creature. And at that point in time, we will make it known and hopefully, said to listeners, to show it to the world as it is being done. I want to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, nonsense. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, if you go to the website of uh, OregonBigfoot.com, yep. Young, young lady out there put this together in such a magnificent um, a way. It, it's so obvious what's going on because she quoted everything um, uh, verbatim, and uh, it's just another. Uh, it's just another thing. And unfortunately, Rob, I know personally. I can. I te strap me up as many lie detector t uh, detectors that you have. I know they exist because I've seen them. I've heard them. I've smelled them. Everything. Mm -hmm. They're there. And yet I have seen so many absolutely ludicrous fakes that go on because until science accepts it, you're going to have all these people that are sitting in a corner or in a bar or something. They have nothing in their life. So they say, okay, I'm going to be a Bigfoot hunter. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do mm -hmm. that. It's nonsense. And it's sad because organized science, there are a few people. Uh, Dr. Grover Krantz, God bless him, you know, and uh, and now uh, Dr. Je uh, Jeffrey Meldrum. People like that are coming forward and doing it, and they're flying in the face of organized science. Now, why is that, Rob? Why do you think science doesn't want, uh, and the United States government, why don't they put together a legitimate team? But then again, what did they do at Roswell? They covered up the truth. Yeah. Uh, it's because, I, and this is my opinion, it's because our, our basis of religions, uh, I'm talking about the organized religions, exclude UFOs. They exclude any hominid other than ourselves. And it would attack the base of these three major organized religions. Well, excuse me, truth is truth, whatever it is. And I'm just one of those guys, I don't care what I want things to be. The question is, what is is now uh, don't you suppose there should be a, a law somehow against this type of fakery uh, this fraudulent approach yeah I, I, I agree there should be uh, Robert and uh, just reading uh, that article that you sent me uh, mm -hmm. from Oregon Bigfoot I, I love it when they say all right they, they give the history of the of the uh, of the alleged find and they did an excellent job. Uh, of this whole article, and then it says, "Enter Biscardi. Say Tom Biscardi's name, and any researcher worth their salt will groan." A charismatic individual who seeks the limelight incessantly and is known for making grandiose claims himself. Thomas Biscardi has been hunting the fringes, haunting the fringes of Bigfoot research for decades. While Tom conducts every media interview with deadpan seriousness. And his website triumphs that he is the best known research. He is the best renowned or renowned Bigfoot researcher. His circus barker approach to the subject makes serious researchers cringe. He's he's that that getting media exposure, and why not? The media doesn't care if Bigfoot researchers are credible. They want headlines, and Biscardi gives them exactly that. Step right up, folks. Biscardi was involved in a fiasco of similar proportions almost exactly three years ago. On July 14, 2005, Biscardi appeared on Coast to Coast with George Nury, making the sensational declaration that he was 98% sure that his group will be able to capture a Bigfoot, which they had been tracking in the Happy Camp, California area. He returned on August the 5th to say that he was confident he will capture Bigfoot by Wednesday. 
On August the 9th, he appeared again, saying that he expected capture within two weeks. Then three days later, he moved the deadline up one week. On August 19th, 2005, on Coast to Coast AM with George Nury, Biscardi dropped a bombshell. First, he promised Nuri a film of Bigfoot. Then he claimed he was privy to the location of a live Bigfoot in captivity. The creature was apparently in a compound, male, 8 foot tall, 400 pounds, complete with wounds and mosquito bites. He gets an A for originally there. Uh, it was communicating with them, giving back dishes with food on them. Biscardi announced a special site that he would have available soon where people could watch Bigfoot going about his daily routine. Uh, would access to this website be free? Of course not. Now, Nori tells uh, Biscardi, you'll either be an international hero or a goat. Well, a couple of days later, Biscardi appeared again on Coast to Coast. Are we seeing a pattern here, guys? George Nuri has a conversation with Biscardi, then Lorne Coleman, then Biscardi again. And it gives you the entire transcript of the conversation, and I'm not going to go into it because it is rather lengthy, and we've got to take a commercial break. But to make a long story short... This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Tom Biscardi himself. Now, didn't he say earlier in the interview that the the uh, the the Bigfoot was frozen in a block of ice, and then he said that it thawed out, and then he said that the boys kept on adding water, but it wouldn't freeze because it was a frost-free fridge. Now, within a matter of three minutes, not even paying very close attention to what Tom Biscardi was saying, he contradicted himself three times. The guy should be locked up. Robert W. Morgan's, in my opinion, the real Bigfoot hunter, and he's not even a hunter. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to hunt anything down. He wants to communicate with it. He wants to learn about it. He wants to educate people about Bigfoot. And isn't that what researchers do? That's what you would think. But I think that we should uh, change the um, the uh, spelling of pathological liar to something that appears to be Biscardi-esque. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting because the, uh, the book that um, uh, Pine Winds just put out um, for me, um, and I'm not, I'm not touting the book, I'm just making a comment here, uh, they never had a single negative review. It's a nonfiction book. And they snapped up my, uh, uh, the, uh, the manual, the field manual that shows people, teaches them, how to come into contact with these folks gently and honorably. It takes time. It's not, a, it's not an overnight thing. Um, but it, it, it's fascinating that there are so many people out there that do want to communicate with the forest giants gently. You don't need guns. You don't need to capture them, nothing like this. This Bis- Biscardi guy is knocking this way back. It it's, goes way back 
in time to all of the P.T. Barnum type nonsense that we've all lived through. It sounds like and a sideshow. It does, exactly that. And unfortunately, there's an awful lot of people, uh, Rob, that are out here spending their time, their money, their effort, uh, their good heart, trying to communicate with the forest giant people uh, in a gentle way and to have this kind of, of foolishness. Now it's going to reflect on them uh, in their communities. People are going to make fun of them. Uh, they're, they're going to be driven further underground. And it's just simply not fair. It's not right. I think Mr. Biscardi, uh, Biscardi should be taken out uh, and horsewhipped. And uh, I'd be the first person to, uh, to wield it if I got the opportunity. It's just wrong. It's, it's wrong to do things. Got a question here from uh, one of our listeners. His name is Pacali. He listens to us on uh, AM uh, 1330 in Cleveland. Uh, he says, Hi, hello, Exxon Radio and Mr. Rob McConnell. May I please ask Robert W. Morgan a question about the forest giants during tonight's show? Dear Mr. Robert Morgan, could you comment on the Sasquatch curse, which brings bad luck or death to people who have had contact or bad intentions toward the Bigfoot beings. And do you think that we should give some warning about this curse to the two Georgia law enforcement individuals who brought this uh, Sasquatch, uh, this creature, out of the wilderness? Well, uh, as a kid from Canton, Ohio, just south of you there in Cleveland, Mm -hmm. I can tell you there's no such thing as as a Bigfoot curse uh, because obviously I've come into contact with them multiple times. Usually it's a brushing type thing unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that when you have liars or you have people that are out there trying to kill something that is totally benign, they have an evilness within them. They have a sickness within them. And it doesn't matter what they would go after. Something is going to come back and bite them on the popo. It has nothing to do with the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot, the Omaha, whatever you want to call them. It has nothing to do with that. It comes back to the people and their intent. And it got, uh, karma has a, an interesting thing, and life has an interesting thing, of sometimes bouncing things back at you, mm-hmm. that which you project. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't lay that at the door of any curse, except for some damn fool that would want to go out and harm something that is, that is um, uh, benign. I think their evilness comes back on them. I don't think it has anything to do with the object. Um, One of the questions that I have that has been haunting me ever since I heard this entire story was that this is the first time where a Bigfoot body has actually been found. And according to the reports, Robert, the, uh, the boys saw other Bigfoot in the area as they approached the uh, the the dead body of this so-called Bigfoot, mm-hmm. does that sound legitimate to you? No, that was the, one of the first flags that went straight up on me. First of all, they said that the, that the thing was had been dead a couple of days. They thought, uh, and there were other forest giants in the area. First of all, uh, if they were in the area. And, and the forest giant had been dead, because they do die like everything else. Mm-hmm. It would have been well taken care of, number one. Then they went out and hired some Mexicans, they said, to come in and haul the body out. Well, I know quite a few Mexican people, and they're good people. They're very religious people. And if you think they're going to go out there and haul the body out of something, and then they heard the forest giants around them, hello? Of course not, because they would have been attacked. First of all, they would have never found it, because if it was dead a couple of days, the other forest giants would have taken care of it. That's, that's flaw number one. Number two, they'd never let them take the body out. A few good rocks winged over their heads would have sent them all running like hell. I mean, that story tells you how much these so-called hunters know about their quarry. They don't know a damn thing. You know, we were talking about what the uh, the repercussions will be on the Bigfoot community, but unfortunately, every community within the paranormal is going to be affected by this in in a very, very, very detrimental way. Yes, it is. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And uh, this man is, is done unconscionable, and unreasonable damage to people that are trying to do good things. Uh, but at the same time, I think it can o- also operate a different way. 
forget the public because the public's opinion in many instances it doesn't matter um, the fact that Rob McConnell exists it doesn't make a damn bit of difference whether any, anybody else believes you exist mm -hmm. you do so, so uh, I wouldn't worry so much about them but uh, I think that the, the forest giant researchers the true ones um, it's going to kind of amalgamate us into a, into a more firm stance and I've always urged people to work in secrecy and it's not because I'm sneaky it's because neighbors friends whatever they think they are have a habit if you're doing something out of the norm they will go out and lay down little landmines for you just for a chuckle and I've seen that many many times uh, where, where people they think they're being cute and, and in fact, they're expending your heartbeats uh, in the wrong way, and they have no right to do that. But I think that this might bring together the true researchers, and they will follow the instructions that I've, I've given for many years, and that is to work uh, alone or with a small group and work in secrecy. And it's not because we're sneaky. It's because people just can't help um, trying to fool you sometimes. So I, when I tell people I'm going to zig, I usually zig, and I learned it the hard way. And that's what I, I think what's going to happen in the long run. I think my little stupid manual that we're putting out here rather shortly, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the Bigfoot uh, field manual, it teaches you how to work on your own or in small groups in secrecy, total secrecy, and, and passively and, and cunningly to try to get them to come to you. And that's what you want. You can't run them down. You have to get them to come to you, get them to trust you. And that's, that's not an easy thing uh, to do. But um, Biscardi's little thing, he's going to chase away uh, what I call the flutter balls. And I, I don't concern myself about that. He will poison the well of the, the ordinary citizen. This is true. But it will drive to the hardcore, true researchers uh, uh, to become more um, mm, private, but also I think it's going to make them more steely inside. It's going to put a spine to them, and I think the more good things will come out. Now, whatever they find is going to come under greater scrutiny because of fools like Biscardi. But that's okay. If you find the right thing, you don't have to worry about um, whether or not... Uh, you go under great scrutiny. You should welcome it. Yes. I always have. Something that has also uh, been brought to my attention by a number of people in the Bigfoot community is that Bob Gimlin has not commented on this case. And, you know, you'd think that Gimlin would be right up there saying, See, I told you, Bigfoot's real. No. No, Bob won't do that. Uh, he know, uh, You know, I, I know Bob. And I'm one of the few people, I think, uh, in the community that can call his home. And uh, I'm welcome to call him. Uh, we, we share quite a few things together. And uh, Bob would not do that. He's a very private man. He knows what he saw. He knows what he did. And he doesn't give a damn what anyone else thinks. Uh, he's so sick and tired of the nonsense. And uh, he, he just says, I know what I saw, I know what I did, that's it, yeah. and the world can go to blue blazes. I'm one of the few people also, I think, because he's done this with me before when I've called him, he has come on shows with me because he trusts me, and he mm -hmm. should trust me. I'm like a brother to him, so God bless him. All but, right, uh, Robert, you and I have to take our final break for this hour. The one and only Robert W. Morgan is my guest this hour. His website is www.trueseekers.com. Dot o -R -G. Exxon Nation, go to www.exxonradiotv.com. We have at least 20 to 30 different articles about this Bigfoot, as well as many, many, many videos. That's at www.exxonradiotv.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue right here on the Exxon Radio Show from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, 
at WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking all our guests tonight. Uh, John Lee Schneider, we talked about alien invaders and space dragons. William Bullman, we talked about out-of-body experiences. Our good friend Elizabeth Joyce joined me to talk about psychic attacks. And finally, but certainly not least, Robert W. Morgan and I talking about the Bigfoot fiasco at the hands of the one and only Tom Biscardi. Robert's website is www.trueseekers.org. That's www.trueseekers.org. And like I said, there are many, many, many stories uh, from the X-Zone newsroom at www.xzoneradiotv.com. Robert, uh, have you heard any uh, any feedback from members of the First Nation uh, on this, um, the way that Bigfoot is being treated as a... Uh, as a novelty item in a sideshow? As a matter of fact, I have. Uh, this very same day, I uh, received um, a phone call from a, a person who is a descendant, a direct descendant of Crazy Horse, uh, of the Sioux Nation, Oglala Sioux. And uh, they feel the same way I do, which is, um, this, is a, 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 this is an abhorrence. This is absolute nonsense. And um, simultaneously, they kind of equate it into, unfortunately, this is the way so many white people uh, treat something that the, the First Nation people know exists, mm-hmm. and yet they often deny it, simply, and often deny it, simply because there's no sense in sharing wisdom with fools in their mind. Uh, by the way, uh, before we sign off, I have to thank you very much, Tom, for the effort that you and Laura have put into your show, because the type of things you approach are outside the norm, but it's type of thing that draws the audiences who I want to ask why and what if. And um, folks like you are uh, are too rare. Oh, but thank you, Robert. Time, no, 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 the other way around. Thank you for, guys for doing what you're doing. And oh. thank you for inviting me. It's always a great pleasure having you on the show with us, Robert. Do me a favor, take care of yourself, and um, we'll be in touch because I, I, I'm st- there's still so much more to this story that is yet to break. Uh, for example, I, I want to see how he gets out of the uh, out of the um, soup when he can't come up with yeah. DNA, and then I, I really want to see what exactly he has under the tarp. Mind you, what happens if he really has Bigfoot? 
I doubt very seriously that he does. And if he does, good, then we'll find out. But uh, until you turn it over to proper scientists, mm -hmm. and not, not self-appointed people. And, uh, and picking on my, my friend in, in Portland, Oregon, uh, it is unfair because uh, he's a good man. He, he tries very, very hard. And in any case, Tom, I, I know, uh, <laughs> Rob, I know we're at the end of our hour. And I'm sorry yes, we are, my that. friend. But thank you so much, and good night to you, and good night to that lovely Laura. I will make sure she gets the message. Robert, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll speak to you next week for sure. Anytime. Bye-bye, buddy. Robert W. Morgan, www.trueseekers.org. Well, that's it for tonight, everyone. I hope each and every one of you have a great weekend. I'll be back Monday night at 10 o'clock as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. To the newbie at Master Control, thanks for keeping us up on those four big satellites in the sky, Galaxy 4R, Telstar 7, Aglia 2, and G3. And, of course, on TalkStarRadio.com, streaming audio. To my wife and senior producer, the lovely Laura Rogers, thank you, sweetheart. And to you, the Exxon Nation, thank you for allowing us to be part of your day or night, no matter where you are on this great big world of ours. So until Monday night, have a safe weekend, and always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the sky.